I love this one. Definitely something colorful. So yeah, you should do it. I had so much fun. So stick around, you don't wanna miss it. Hello everyone. Today we're gonna see how a gel printer this beautiful monoprint. which I actually printed from my own photos. Yeah, I like to use my own photos when I gel print. People ask me sometimes, where do you get these photos from? So now you know, I get them from me. <laughs> yeah, it's always better to use your own photos if you can. That's why this process is so great because you can use your own photos. So yeah, you should do it. And at the end of this video, I'll let you know which one of these prints is my favorite one. And I'll also show you what I'm going to do with all these wonderful gel prints. So stick around, you don't wanna miss it. Maybe you do, but yeah, stick around anyways. So now I would like to invite you to join me in my studio. So welcome. Okay, so let's start now. Let's see how it's done. So like I mentioned before, I'm going to use a simple gel plate to monoprint these photos. Today, I'm going to use a commercial or store-bought uh, gel printing plate. I'm going to use gel press, but remember, you can always use your own homemade gel plate for this process. If you're interested in making and using your own gelatin plate, check out my previous video. I'll post the link to this video below just for you. Yeah, I'm doing it just for you. So yeah, I don't really have a goal for today's printing session, just to play around with my paints and make some something really colorful. Definitely something colorful. So the only idea I have in mind is to use photos I took in New York. Like I mentioned before, I'm going to use my own photos. They're my babies. And lucky you, you don't have to do anything. I'm going to do all the work so you can just sit back and relax and enjoy the session today. It's a fun process. I hope it's going to be as fun watching it as it is making these prints. This is a fun day in the studio. So I'm going to start by making a few colorful monoprints. They will be the background for my photo transfers. Here I'm using paper that I normally don't use. It's a simple cardstock paper and I usually prefer using papers that have some texture to them. But I just have a lot of this paper. <laughs> So I decided to find some good use for it. It's always good to just use the supplies you have, right? And speaking of supplies, there are links to all the supplies I'm using today, including printer, paint, and even the paper I'm using. All the links are below this video in the description area. And by the way, since we are just making the backgrounds for our photo transfers, we don't really need to worry about the design or outcome of these prints as they are going to be mostly covered by the image on top of them. So we are just having fun making them. This is worry-free fun. Also, for these backgrounds, you can use most acrylic paints or inks you have uh, on hand. In fact, you can even use inexpensive craft paints, which come in small bottles. They will work just fine here. 
And as you can see, I like to use a lot of bright light colors for my backgrounds. They are going to complement my photos so nicely. Now, in addition to the colorful backgrounds, I decided also to print some text to make the background a little more interesting. I'm using text which I printed on both sides of the paper using my laser printer. If you don't have a laser printer, you can use a toner based photocopy from your local copy center. Or uh, read my article, How to Get Inexpensive Laser Printer, which is on my new and fresh website, nitzacreativestudio.com. But if you don't want to use a laser printer or make a photocopy, Another idea is to use text from a magazine. In any case, text can add a lot of character to your artwork. And if you like this process, you're going to love my book, the new mixed media photography book. It's available on Amazon, so check it out soon. <laughs> Number one bestseller <laughs> out of my books, of course. <laughs> and if you prefer a digital PDF version, check out the ebook. It's available on my website, nitacreativestudio.com It's a fun website, you should check it out. And while you're there, sign up for my newsletter. It's really fun with lots of goodies. Who doesn't want goodies? That's silly, so don't be silly. <laughs> sign up to the newsletter. This is nitaselfpromotion.com <laughs> Sorry about the self-promotion, now let's move on. <laughs> Okay, so now we arrived to the really interesting part. <laughs> now that we finished making the background, we are ready for some photo transferring. Yeah, so we are going to transfer our own photos and gel print them onto the background we've made before. And I really hope I'm not gonna mess up the beautiful backgrounds I made. <laughs> So the first one I'm going to try is a photo I took in Chelsea from the High Line. As you can see, I print on both sides of the paper in order to save on paper. And it looks like we've got a good transfer here. So now, while it's still wet, we're going to lift it onto one of the backgrounds we made before. Okay, first one looks like a definite success. And if this is all new to you and you're not sure how to transfer photos and text with a gel plate, make sure to check out the beginner's video I made previously. There's a link to the basic transfer tutorial below this video. But for now, just sit back and enjoy and watch me do all the work. Luckily, it's fun for me. I really like taking photos, especially when I travel. And I just love printing with my gel plate. So combining both of these loves and creating these monoprints, it's just so relaxing and for sure satisfying for me. And don't forget to stick around and watch which one of these is my favorite and why. And also watch what I'm going to do with all these beautiful monoprints.
Thank you all for your comments. Joyce wrote a comment on my previous video. Hi, Joyce. Thank you. And she said, I make this process look like it's so easy to do. And I definitely agree. And thank you, Joyce, so much for this comment. I think it's an important comment and important topic to talk about. I know sometimes YouTube videos make it look so easy to create or do something, just like the creator is showing in a few minutes uh, video. And I'm not sure it's good because what we don't see is the whole time that creator is working and training and learning to do whatever he's doing. Yeah, we don't see that. We don't see all the effort and the time that they put into the process, into learning and perfecting whatever they're doing. But yes, it makes us unrealistic. Yes, it makes us unrealistic about what we're watching, about the difficulty of whatever we are watching someone else doing. So sometimes I get emails or messages or comments from people who try to gel print their own photos and they're disappointed because they can't make it happen right away. And I feel a little guilty and that it's a little bit my fault because I don't make it look easy. But that's because for me, it is easy. It is easy now, but it did take me a long time to develop this technique from an idea to a beautiful process. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't even happen over a week. It took a lot longer, but now I've been doing it for a few years. So <laughs> of course it's easy now. <laughs> so please don't be discouraged when you first try this process and it doesn't work right away or as you expected. Just continue and practice it. It's definitely not a difficult process to do, but it takes time to get it right. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Where's my favorite one? That's my favorite one. So it wasn't easy to choose, but I think this is my very favorite one. I like the blue, but also I'm a little biased because the original photo has a special place in my heart. So now let's see what I decided to do with all these beautiful monoprints. So yeah, you can definitely print inside your journal or sketchbook to start with. Uh, and this way, of course, you'll avoid having loose prints all over the place. But today we are talking about loose prints and what to do with them. And yeah, you can take your loose prints and put them in albums. But honestly, I don't like to look at my prints behind plastic. So I decided to bind my prints into a homemade book. There are of course many different ways to bind a book and I found a great tutorial by Jennifer from Sea Lemon and I'll link to it in the description box. I like this uh, method because it uses six different color threads and because when the book is ready the pages are going to lie flat. So I'm not going to say it was an easy challenge for me, but I did enjoy it very much and I'm definitely going to do more binding projects. So this is what a final DIY book looks like. It didn't come out perfect at all, but still I do like it. Yes, it's far from being perfect, but I think it's not too bad for a first bookbinding attempt. <laughs> I would like to do some more bookbinding. If you know of any easy beginner friendly bookbinding project, 
please let me know in the comments. I will greatly appreciate it. And I prefer a video, but a blog post will be fine too. This was so much fun. And I hope you had fun watching it. I hope you did. <laughs> let me know your thoughts or any suggestions you have about this video. I hope this video is not too long. <laughs> I would love to hear from you, especially suggestions. I always uh, appreciate those. I love them better than questions. <laughs> They help me improve what I'm doing and improve my videos, I think. They're always interesting and give me a lot of ideas or things to try. And I love testing and trying new things. So I really, really appreciate any comments and any suggestions and things maybe that I need to fix. Uh, that's okay too. I don't get offended easily, so don't worry about it. <laughs> let me know. If I need to fix anything, just let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah, now it's good. <laughs> Suggestions. That's a hard one to say for me. <laughs> but, but what? And I'm not sure it's a good thing. And I'm not sure. <laughs> and I prefer a video, but a blog post will be fine too. <laughs> I would love to hear from you. I especially enjoy the suggestions, <laughs> even though it's not an easy word for me to say. <laughs> okay, microphone back in place. Where were we? <laughs> All right, one more time. <laughs> that was hard to say. <laughs> yeah, I like to gel to... <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and I'm off now, time for my evening walk. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video.